Is a part of you questioning if you would feel as excited to turn 30 in a few hours if you weren't in love right now? I did think about this the other day because I was like, okay, I'm not married. I am seeing someone. I'm very happy with this person, but I don't have kids. Like I don't have the things that I thought that I was gonna have in my 30s. But I think I would feel worse if I was turning 30 in an unhappy relationship. I think I would feel less accomplished. Lovers and friends. Lovers and friends. I'ma take you on a trip, baby, I don't pretend, I said, lovers and friends, uh, I'ma hold you down, down to the end, I said. What's up, lovers and friends? Welcome to Lovers and Friends, the podcast brought to you by your hostess with the mostest. I stuttered there because I'm the hostess with the leastest, to be honest with you. Right now, I am struggling with my inner perfectionism because I am recording on a camera in front of a dingy window in a low-lit hotel room holding an iPhone. And as you know here, we pride ourselves on production and quality. And so it's making me struggle a little bit that this week, we don't have it. But what we do have is a podcast devoted to coming to you week after week despite the conditions in order to share important stories about sex, love, and relationships that can help you reflect and hopefully amplify your own intimate life. This episode is pretty perfect given the conditions I just described because what we're talking about is transitioning from your 20s into your 30s and how for many people this transition is less about big differences in their life and reconciling with the different feelings that come up as a result of this turn of the page, the turn of the decades. And what I mean by that is many of us grew up seeing ourselves at 30 in a very particular way. And statistically, many of us don't fit the vision that we painted in our younger years. Most people are now getting married um, or you know, coming into their long-term life partner or their attempt at life partnership in their late 20s, early 30s. And because of that, most people are also having their first child. In many cases, owning their first piece of property, coming into their first job that feels like an actual career, also later in life. And while there is so much research that really amplifies how these changes and these delays are actually really beneficial when it comes to long-term happiness, when you're going through it, you can't help but feel like a letdown. And reconciling the expectation with the reality is a challenge in itself, and that is why an entire episode is dedicated to it. And we have Cami Crawford on this episode who happened to spend her last day in her 20s recording with lovers and friends, reflecting on how she felt not moving into her 30s with the life partner and the kids and the trailer and the timeshare in tow, but instead moving in with other life lessons and experiences that may not look how she thought, but actually end up being exactly what she needs to get into the life that she's always ultimately desired and is desiring because I think the definition changes over time with maturity and experience. And in many cases, the experience you can only get from fucking up in your 20s and figuring things out or just fucking up in life, period. This episode really is special to me because the change for me from 29 to 30 was both so incredibly and embarrassingly uneventful and insanely monumental at the exact same time. And what I mean by that is being 30 and being 22 did not look a whole lot different. As a matter of fact, it might have looked worse. When I was 30 years old, I was on the brink of deportation in America. I regularly had a bank account of like $3. I was kicked out of my sublease apartment because I regularly missed rent. I didn't have any credit in America, so I had a very hard time finding an apartment. Eventually, like literally weeks before my 30th birthday, I landed a spot in a studio apartment that I made cute, but was anything but from the outside. Um, I left that apartment because of bed bugs and many, many, many stolen packages. But nonetheless, like all in all, my 30 didn't look like 30. Didn't have the partner, didn't have the career, didn't have any of the stability. And as a result, I was so embarrassed that I actually lied about my age for a couple of years, maybe a year and a half even thereafter, to the point that Jared did not know, Jared, my husband, didn't actually even know my real age until we moved together. 
I told everybody I was 28 rather than 30 because I had such a hard time with that reconciliation. And when I look back on that, although I made that decision to make myself more comfortable, I genuinely wish that I would have been able to find grace and compassion and love, not just for myself, but for who I was and where I was at at the time. I also give myself permission to stop speaking because my throat is really dry in this dry ass room. And now I can give Cammie opportunity to tell her story. And if you don't know about Cammie, let me tell you about this fantastic woman who has been in the podcast before. She is a former Miss Teen USA. She is the co-host of MTV's Catfish. She has her own incredible podcast, which I've guested on a couple times too, called Relationship. You're exactly what you are until you become more than that in relationships. It's harsh. And it's brutal and it feels fucking horrible, especially when you're really into somebody, you like somebody a lot and you want something more. But until you have had that conversation, until they have explicitly said to you, I want to be with you, let's be in a relationship, let's take this a step further, you are nothing. Now you're something to somebody, to your mom, your grandma, your dog, but you are nothing to that man until it is something. One more thing, before we dive into this interview with Cami, I want to tell you about the sponsor of this episode, BetterHelp, which I think is the perfect sponsor given all that we've discussed. And if you're not familiar, BetterHelp is a service that matches you with a licensed professional therapist or counselor through your phone that you communicate with 100% through your phone. BetterHelp allows you to get the help that you need on terms that are 100% controlled by you. You decide how long you get therapy for, how you communicate with your therapist, and ultimately who your therapist is, as you can change counselors at any time with no cost. You can also choose to end therapy at any time. It's, again, all really up to you. The flexibility, the freedom, and the affordability that BetterHelp offered is the reason why I chose it as my medium to get therapy when I was at a place where I felt overwhelmed by my emotions and feeling better or feeling more optimistic was not as easy as changing my mind. I needed a change of perspective and a better help therapist genuinely helped me to get that. And if you are in a place where you feel like you could benefit from that kind of help, you could also benefit from the code I'm about to give you. So if you are thinking of giving therapy a try, I want you to consider BetterHelp as a great and incredibly accessible option. When you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com lovers today to get 10% off your first month of therapy. Once again, that is betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash lovers for 10% off your first month. And now let's talk to Cammie. This is your last day of your 20s and you're choosing to spend it here on Lovers and Friends. And I'm so happy that I am because I have literally told everyone, anyone who asks, anyone that I can talk about you with, I always say that Chan makes me like want to be a better woman. I've said it so many times. I think I've said it in interviews before. Really? Yes. Okay. It's not about we'll our love fest. Yeah. <laughs> this is about love in your 20s, a yes. decade that you are leaving in T minus eight hours. I mean, basically. Okay. How do you feel? I'm ready. I've already started saying I'm 30. It's like a weird thing because I thought I thought that by 30, I would be freaking out. Like I thought that this would be the time when I would be like, what the fuck? Like where what's happening to my youth? It's over. But I've heard that your 30s are so much better than your 20s. I feel like I have set myself up properly to be in this space now where like, I am a grown ass woman. I know what I want. I have a fucking home. I bought my first place. She's a home buyer. <laughs> and I don't know. I just feel like I've, I've set myself up to be proud of myself enough to enter this new era of my life feeling confident. I've set myself up mm -hmm. to be proud of myself mm -hmm. enough to enter this new era of my life feeling confident. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. To be filled with pride. Yes. Are you proud of... Are you proud of who you are today? despite all the bullshit or are you just proud of all of it? I think I'm proud of overcoming the bullshit enough to be standing where I'm standing. I'm finally at a place where I'm like, I have, I have no choice but to be proud of myself in this moment. This is radical. Oh, that's the right word. In the face of the last time that we spoke, mm -hmm. 
to be excited and proud and hopeful going into your 30s because at age 29, mm -hmm. I'm now learning, I didn't, know, I didn't think I knew your age at the time, you broke up with the person that you were hoping would mm -hmm. be your forever. Yeah. And it was a somewhat sudden breakup. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was right after my 29th birthday. It was sudden in the sense that I was like, it's over. But it wasn't in the sense that I knew that it was over before it was over. Yeah. yeah. You still were kind of keeping hope. Mm -hmm. So I just think that a lot of women in particular, because they have this dream that like by 30, I'll have this shirt up. I'll have yeah. my long term partner to be thrust back into the dating market at a time where you felt like I would never have to do that ever again mm -hmm. can be very overwhelming for people. It was terrifying for me because I had never been on a dating app. I had never really dated. Like I just never, I just never did. I told you I get wiped up very fast and you know, it's like a, a weird flex because I'm not actually wiped up. <laughs> like I don't actually have a ring. I haven't actually had a wedding. Um, but I, I, I had never experienced what it was like to be on the dating scene and to go from talking about home buying with someone, having kids with someone, like planning a wedding with someone. We were never engaged, but like, you know, you're having those conversations to this person is no longer a part of my life. I don't even speak to this person still. And now I have to find somebody else to have these conversations with. I was like, I was excited about the possibility of like a, a new person coming into my life. But I was also terrified about how to find that person in yeah. the first place. Like, where am I going to find this person? I travel so much. How am I going to meet this person? I'm going to have to get on a dating app and put myself out there for other people to see me on this app. For some reason to me, it felt not like a failure, but like just a really strange ex public experience. And I'm a very private person, despite all the things that I share about my entire life all the time. Um, it felt s s terrifying. It was a big difference between sharing from a perspective of have, like mm -hmm. here's what I have, here's what I'm doing, to have nots. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And that that was scary. And also, I mean, I think at the time when the breakup was happening, I was like, I remember the first time I went home to see my family was for Thanksgiving. It was after the breakup and I was so used to having this person with me at Thanksgiving that showing up to my family now 29 having talked to this person up so fucking much and like this is my person we're gonna get married and da, 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 and like everyone knew this person showing up to my family for the first time without this person felt that felt like a failure to me I was like I I am none of the things that I, I don't have any of the things that I said to you guys my family was like bitch relax right you are perfect and we're so happy to have you home they like completely poured into me that week and I left feeling excited for the future for the first real time um and didn't didn't think about it again it was it that sometimes you need to be with your family you know what I think too <laughs> it's a lot of things that mix into this feeling of failure as you come into your 30s not having the things mm -hmm. you have the house which is huge yeah I went into 30 with none of the things mm. to the point that I lied about my age when I turned 30, no yes, I said I was 28, so I didn't like go too crazy. <laughs> Fun fact, I met Jared at age 30. Uh -huh. And when I met him, because I had nothing, I was living in a studio apartment, I didn't own anything, I was on the fritz of being deported back to Canada, so I didn't mm. even have stability in the country. I was just like, my life did not look like a 30 year old and I was embarrassed of that. Mm. And so I said 28 just to give myself the permission to mm. feel okay with where I was at and to introduce people to me. Otherwise I think I would have been too ashamed. Um, but it was like a little bit of societal expectation that was in there, a little bit of the, what I thought people would think of me, Yeah. but it was mostly me judging myself based on my younger expectation of who I'd be. Mm. It was my, 14 year old self. Yeah. Who was like, like, when I'm you're 30, a fucking loser. Yeah. Right. What a fucking nasty bitch we were back in those <laughs> yeah, days. Right. Because I remember being 12, 14, 20 and being like, when I'm 25, I'm going to have two kids. I'm going to have this house. I'm going to have this van. I'm going to be driving this car. And then I turned like 22 and I was like, mm, the kids, maybe not, but the, the wedding for sure happening by 25. 
Then I turned 25 and I was like, mm, no, <laughs> none of that. <laughs> Erase all of that. Delete all that shit. I, it's just, I don't know. I think now I, I don't have the, the husband. I don't have the kids. But I'm realizing now at 30, actually being 30, well, tomorrow? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm realizing that what does it mean to have everything that you need by the time you're 30? Like, what does that mean? What does that look like for you? And you have to get there to know what that even looks like for you. I thought that what I needed at 30 was X, Y, and Z, but I'm realizing that what I needed at 30 is exactly what I have. I don't need anything else. What do you have? I have an incredible career that makes me so happy. I'm doing exactly what I wanted to do from age 19. 11 years later, I made it happen for myself. I bought my condo of my dreams. I bought it without even seeing it. That's how much I knew that it was like the right place for me. Um, and I have love, like between my friends, I'm seeing someone, like I'm, I'm not married to this person, but that's okay. Are you guys in love? There's plenty of love there. I actually just read, because you guys started dating, you, I can say it, May, yes, right? May. I was just reading an article that said that love usually happens after five months. Like, it's a very natural time to mm. go from, like, I enjoy you to yeah. I love you. Yeah, we've said I love you. Um, but for me, I have noticed and realized how important introspection is. And I have loved that word for forever because I think it's important to like take personal accountability and really look at yourself and the things, the decisions that you're making. But I'm realizing now how much PTSD I have from my past relationship. And from that feeling of like my life is set, everything is good to that being completely disrupted and changed. I understand. It has, it's fucked with me. I'm not even gonna lie. It has fucked with me hardcore. And I've been working through it through therapy, but even my therapist is like the growth of you being able to say that versus being like, no, it's not affecting me. Like, no, I'm, I'm good. No, it's fucked with me. It has. So like for me to be in love with someone, what do you think? How do you what, how do you feel when you're in love with someone? Like, what does that mean for you versus loving someone? And do you think that there's a difference? Mm, this I, is my podcast now. OK, <laughs> it's such a great question. <laughs> I think it's important to have these definitions too because mm -hmm. in Sanskrit there's like 40 different words to describe love and in English we have a limited amount and mm -hmm. even then we don't take the time to define them for ourselves. Yeah. It's like bitch take a second. Yeah. What's love to you? What's being in love to you? Being in love is being in awe, like being in worship and mm. awe worship like it's whimsical. Mm -hmm. Like wow. Like someone introduced the word whimsy to me in that it's just because joy. Mm. Right? There's yeah. no real function of it. It just like is and it just brings you joy. Yeah. So I think that being in love is that. It's just like oh, whimsy. Being in love is like practically, or loving somebody is practically understanding the value that they add to your life and the value that you want to add to theirs and mm. devoting yourself to that every day. Yes. Yes. I, I feel that. For me, being in love with someone is giving you literally my life in your hands. Like it is unconditional love, trust. Like you can tell me that the sky is fucking orange and I'm going to believe it. That's, that is in love with me, like for me. So are you in love right now then? Not yet. Not yet. Mm -hmm. I love, I love him because he's incredible. He's amazing. He makes me feel incredible. Um, the conversations that we have, the depth of those conversations that we have, the sex that we have, everything like encompassed with that, um, the values, like the list that I made, Shan, the man takes off every single box on that list, except he's not in love with dogs. Okay. But does he so love them? Throw them out. Does he love dogs? No. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> And I'm Why? like, my Who dog's looking for like a step dog? daddy, so I'm going to need you to step into the plate. What kind of... I, that's what I'm saying. The You're cats crazy. I get. He's like, you know what? He, I actually appreciate that he doesn't love dogs because it's so, like, on brand for being a human to love dogs. Yeah. To go away from that, to stray away from that is actually quite brave. Mm. It's like saying that you don't love pizza. 
Right. Because it's like now everybody questions everything about you. Yeah. Because this is a human experience. Are you even a person? No. Are you a robot? Are you from outer space? The jig is up. Yes. So the fact that he's willing to like put that in people's mind of like, I might not actually be a regular person. Yeah. Because I don't love dogs is quite cool. Which is, it's definitely on brand for him because he's so just like incredible to me. Like just out of this world, incredible to me. Oh my gosh, you loser. I I think you're going to say that. I hate it. (laughs) Ew, delete it. It's interesting to you say this because before we started doing this, we spoke for three minutes, Mm -hmm. which is the trust that I have for you. Yeah. Like, what are we talking about? The trust that I have for you is the fact that you were like, come on. And I was like, great, I'm coming to the podcast. But I had no idea what we were going to talk about. Well, you have to come because I came on yours twice. Yeah, of course. So it was a natural trade. But But I also just wanted to see you. This is really why you're here, to be honest. (laughs) Yes. It's a friendship date. Yeah. Um, But we were talking about a possible topic. You're like, "Uh, I'm kind of with somebody. And the way that you said it made it seem as if in... Barcelona, where you just were, correct? Somewhere in Canary Spain. Canary Islands. So in Spain, yeah. I met this person. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. I don't know how we're going to figure it out, but <laughs> God damn it, like they turned my back out and yeah. like, we'll see, we'll figure it out. Yes. And that's the story I was expecting on the other side of that. And no. then when you told me more, it was like, no, this is a mature, mm-hmm. evolving, somewhat long-term connection that you have been fostering and building in a healthy way. Yeah. It's natural that now you guys would be in a space that you're together. Yeah. And that I met on an app. The exact thing that I was just talking about 10 minutes ago about being afraid of. I met him on Raya the first day that I got on Raya. Yeah. Bizarre. So strange. But as soon as his picture popped up, I like almost put a hole through my phone hitting the heart button. I was like, <laughs> yes, <laughs> this is it. And then we matched. And the next day we went to brunch. We went on a date. And after that, I mean, it was just like fast. I don't even know. Like you're. You're giving a lot of faith right now, and I love it. In light yeah. of what you just said, mm-hmm. the fact that you're speaking so expressedly fangirlish yeah. about this person is really beautiful. You know, there's a part of me that doesn't want to just in case it doesn't work out because that's the PTSD that I've been going through. But your authentic <laughs> experience in this moment yeah. is that this is your truth. Yeah. And the reason why I know that I love this person, I love my alone time. I love being by myself. It's one of my favorite activities. I want to be by myself with this person. Wow. And he's the same way. What does it mean to be by yourself with someone? Right. Doesn't that sound crazy? <laughs> no, but it sounds poetic. <laughs> it sounds insane. Because sometimes, you know, when you're with someone and it's just a feeling of being able to be with someone and be completely silent, but it not feel empty or awkward or... Or having somebody in your space where it feels like you constantly have to entertain them. I think because that's what I do for a living. When I'm with someone, I want to be able to feel like we're both in this space together, but we don't have to talk about anything. I don't have to constantly be like answering every single question that you have. We don't have to constantly be uh, communicating, which I mean, I guess for some people sounds like, what the fuck are you doing then? We do a lot of that. But like in the moments when it's not happening, I don't have anxiety of like, well, is he, does he think I'm not interesting? Like, does he think, is he not like entertained by me? Is he going to go somewhere else and find somebody that's more uh, talkative? I'm very talkative. So we know bitch can talk. I want somebody that I can be quiet with. Oh, Cammy dropping some gems and I hate to interrupt, but I love telling you guys about the sponsors of Lovers and Friends because they've helped me so much and I know for many of you they've helped as well. So it's incredible to pass this information along. And this one definitely hits all those points. I recently had a death in the family and doing this has brought so many great conversations up that are really helpful and hopefully this can help you. So let's talk about Gerber Life Guaranteed Life Insurance. It provides valuable whole life insurance protection to help cover your final expenses. It can help with costly and unexpected expenses such as medical bills, burial costs, and unpaid debts. Protect your family from the financial burden of final expenses by visiting GerberLifeFamily.com to start learning more for you or a loved one. I can't think of a better gift than a gift of peace of mind to somebody who is coming of age. So you've probably heard of Gerber Life Guaranteed Life Insurance, but maybe you or your parents or grandparents never act on it before. But here is why this nudge is necessary. If you or someone you know is between 50 and 80 years old or 50 to 75 in New York, your coverage is guaranteed with this policy regardless of your health history. 
So there's no medical exams to complete or lengthy amounts of questionnaires to fill out and premiums do not increase over time. The amount you pay when coverage begins is the same amount you'll pay throughout the duration of your policy. So the sooner and the healthier you can get started, the better for everyone. All you have to do is answer four easy questions to get your free personalized quote instantly by visiting GerberLifeFamily.com. See website for terms and restrictions and see the show notes for easy access to these links because easy is what you definitely need when it comes to this topic and conversation and of course, plans. Title could be going into my 30s not having what I thought I would have, mm-hmm. but being completely proud of what I do. Yeah. And being single as being a part of it. It's not your story though. Yeah. So. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. As of when though? Like two weeks ago. It's recent. Did he ask or is it like implied? No, he he asked, but he didn't ask in the will you be my girlfriend sense. I am too grown for a boyfriend. I'm looking for a husband. I want a husband. I don't need a boyfriend. I don't need another boyfriend. And I don't need to be anybody's girlfriend. I'm a wife. Give me my ring. I just want to go straight from Raya to wedding. That's the title. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Well, what I heard from you saying that, though, to me, is the difference in where we're at in maturity and also where we're at in terms of relation. Mm -hmm. When we use titles when we're younger to try to get people to live up to a standard that they're not living up to. Mm -hmm. So it's like, we need to be in a committed relationship because right now you're not committed to me. So when we have this title, you'll behave in a way that you haven't been. Right. Whereas when you get older, a title becomes the last thing. Right. Like, oh, we already have respect. We already have agreed boundaries. We already enjoy our time together. We already know how we feel about each other. So a title doesn't really add anything to our dynamic. Yeah. It just helps other people understand it a lot more quickly. Right. To me, it just doesn't hold the same weight that it used to when I was younger. Like it meant a lot to me to be like, oh yeah, he asked me to be his girlfriend. But that's not what he said. He basically was saying, you know, that we've been obviously getting to know each other on a deeper level for a, a while now. And he was like, I, I see a future for us together and I want us to be together and I want to start really cultivating what that future looks like now. And I just want to know if you feel the same way. And I was like, well. That's a really very mature, beautiful way of asking the question of leave you my girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> so you're my girlfriend now. Do we go together? Yes. <laughs> and I was just like, I was like, well, I mean, we we kind of already are doing that. And he was like, right, but... I think that it's important to have the conversation and, you know, just make it very, he was like, I want my intentions to be very clear with you about what I, what I see for us. And I see a future for us. And, you know, we talked about the whole girlfriend, boyfriend thing. And he was like, to be honest, like the term girlfriend doesn't necessarily depict the kind of future that I see between you and I. So, but he's like, whatever pace you want to go at. Well, first he was like, so you want us to be single until we're married? Like, what are, oh, yeah. what's the vibe? And I was like, no, 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 no. I'm locking you the fuck down right now. But I, I thought Oh, you gave was... him the Raya to ring speech. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. I respect course. that. Marry me now. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> On your own time, except my time. Yes, exactly. Immediately. <laughs> but I, even that, like, I'm not, I'm definitely not in a rush. It's just the... Don't get me wrong. I've pressured Jared so badly that literally it's a surprise that he's on a diamond right now. Uh, <laughs> you're like, <laughs> just be walking my around. My yeah. so light <laughs> yeah. today. What is oh, going on? You would think it would be that. It was like, I can't believe it. Today was supposed to be the day you engaged. You proposed and you today did Today was supposed to be oh the day. Oh my gosh. I literally created on a plane i just had the podcast episode about this but there was a day that i said in my mind jared should propose to me oh and then i was on a plane like for a work quick work trip and i played it through my mind that Mm -hmm. i worked myself up into tears of joy on the plane thinking about the impending day that's about to come day comes and i'm like i'm getting married today yeah he has not said this Uh he's not asked my ring size there's like really no clear clue that this would happen other than the fact that I think it's a perfect day. You had a fantasy. So when it didn't happen, I went ballistic on him. Yeah. Um, and then five months later, mm-hmm. no, that's not true. Two months later, we got engaged. So you know what that story tells me? What? You are just as insane as I am. Oh, I know it. <laughs> I know, you know it. it's important? We own it. 
So I'm not going to be pretending like this isn't on my mind. And it's also very different, though, because now it's not done like, again, give me the ring because I want you to become the husband Mm -hmm. that you haven't been. It's give me the ring because this is logical. It's silly of us to waste any more time. What are you looking for? Where, what are you looking for? Even after, I think we, after we started dating, like consecutively for, I don't know if it even been a month. I was like, well, let me ask questions. Sorry, before to cut you mm-hmm. off. Do you want to get married or do you want to get married to him? I guess I'm still figuring it out. I know I'm, I'm going to get married. Um, I need the complete, I'm in love with you. I trust you 1000% before I can make that step. And it's not anything to his fault. He's been incredible. It's really, I'm still working out some shit internally that who knows if it's ever gonna be completely healed or resolved within me that has, there's been several men and situations in my life that have created this. I don't wanna say hard exterior of mine, but it's textured. It's definitely textured and it's it's something that I have to work out. And when I work it out, then I guess then I'll be ready. But I don't feel that I'm ready for marriage at this time, whereas I thought that I was before. And maybe I was, but now I think I'm just looking at things a little bit differently. It's still at 1,000% what I want, but I need to be in a relationship with someone and married to someone that I trust with the fullness of my heart. This person has shown me that he 1000% can be those things. I just have to, I don't know if it's allow myself to believe that it's true. I don't know. Okay, I love this. I love where this is going. I mean, what you're basically saying is that you have come to a place where you know you wanna be married and this person is showing the qualities to Mm -hmm. you of marriage material. Yeah. You just want them to keep showing you that for a little bit more time. Yeah. And then you guys will decide when it's right for you. Yeah. Like in 50 years oh, or five months. <laughs> yeah. Or tomorrow. Your therapist you me said, tonight. you've got to stop doing this, Cammie. She, she said it so many times, but no, I, I, I see it. Like it's all there. So I think that's why we're now in the place where we're like, okay, like let's really, let's really see where this can go because it's already amazing. Like, What else, what else can we do? But I think that when it happens, and everyone keeps saying this to me that I've talked to about him, they're like, this is gonna happen fast. Like this is gonna be, this is gonna be it and this is gonna happen fast. Cause I've, no one has ever heard me talk about someone in this way. Even my sisters are like, this is so gross. I love this for you. Me too, I feel the exact same (laughs) way. I don't know you that well to have a history of this, but I know from what I know from listening to you online, Mm -hmm. it's so phenomenal. It's just, it's, Exactly what every R&B song promised that love could be like. Yeah. And that's what you want for Mm -hmm. your best friend. Yeah, exactly. Now feels like a good time to ask the question that I said we would make the podcast about, uh, which is what are the things that you want to leave behind in your 20s? And what are the things that you want to take from your 20s and move into your 30s when it comes to your love life? One thing that I want to leave behind is the f- the feeling of anxiety. Like I don't want to be in a relationship where I have to feel any level of anxiety about you. What you're doing, who you're hanging out with, where you may or may not go. It's really none of my business. Like I need to be with someone who I trust to just do the do their thing and that they're not showing me a mask of a person compared to the person that they actually are. You know? Um, and then, and is that work that you have to do or is that work that you want your partner going forward to carry for you? I think I, I think everyone requires a certain level of reassurance. I'm not someone who needs to know every single whereabout of yours, but I do need to feel like I can trust that you're going to tell me the truth. You're dating me, which this person is, he knows a bit of what I've dealt with. So if, And with that, because of that, we've had conversations where he's just like, listen, like I want you to know that anything that you share with me will never be used against you. It's for me to take and be mindful of that in the future. And that's what I need, mindfulness. So that's what I'm taking into 30 is my own mindfulness, a personal level of mindfulness. And also I want the relationships that I'm in, I want the people that I'm in relationships with to be considerate to be thoughtful, to be mindful, like that, it's a bare minimum ask. 
but you would be shocked how many people cannot provide. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's it's a, it's a heavy ask. I think in today's world where yes, well. <laughs> there's so many competing expectations, there's so many. It's really hard to cut through the noise and know who you are. And mindfulness is all about knowing who you are in every given moment mm -hmm. and honoring that, but also striving for a better version at the same time. So, yeah, yeah, maybe it's a big word. I think I've I've dated people who are thoughtless and careless, not just with like my feelings, but with themselves and like their own actions. And I just I maturity, like maturity is what I'm bringing into 30. For instance, one of the other reasons why I love this person is the the way that we have worked through difficult conversations has been the most mature conversations that I've had in my life where there's an issue, there's a conversation and there's a resolution. It's not carrying on. It's not where, you know, five huge major blowups have to happen before we can have the calm conversation where it's like storm, 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 and then calm. And then, you know, hopefully both parties have gotten everything out. It's been very mature. And I, I need that, whether it's with this person or somebody else, who knows? I need that. Like and you I can need look forward to, to, to arguments when you feel like the end result is you understand me better and you apply that knowledge going forward. Exactly. Exactly. That's all that I care about. That's all that I care about because I hate repeating myself. I hate feeling like I have to ask the same thing over and over and over again because I've done that before. Is there anything from your <laughs> 20s that you want to recapture and bring back to your 30s? Because sometimes we can go into our 20s with that youthful optimism. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have this, I'm going to get that, I'm going to be like this. And that could even, you know, um, manifest in how you are in the bedroom. Like mm. there's a freeness. Mm -hmm. But then as we get into our mid-20s and we start to experience mass disappointments in relationships that we thought would be much more than they ended up being, yeah, we can lose a bit of that curiosity for mm -hmm. life, the freeness. So I'm wondering if there are things from your 20s that you lost that you now want to bring back into your 30s. It's hard to think about, Shan, because a bitch feels, I mean, life is expensive. I was about to tweet that before I came in here. Life is expensive. There's a lot of expensive things, and I literally mean monetary things. I've had to spend a lot of money recently, and I'm very tired. I feel like a very old person internally. <laughs> so to bring something back from my youth, um, there's, like, nothing that I would bring. <laughs> because right now I'm like, what did you do? What were you doing to set us up for this moment? What were you doing? You didn't even know half of the things. You should have saved every last penny that you had so that we can afford this home decor now. I'm upset with the, my 20 year old <laughs> self. I'm, I'm a little upset because she didn't learn how to budget properly. Um, I can't think of anything. I think that's pretty great. Yeah, I can't think of anything. I think it's great because there are people who will always lust for their teenage years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they will constantly yearn for that because they peaked at that age. Yeah. And then there are people who will just keep looking forward to the future version of themselves because mm -hmm. they've proven to themselves that I just get better with time. Yeah. I think I'm at that place. I don't, there's not, I don't feel like, I mean, I guess because it's a part of my job to go out and like look cute sometimes. I don't feel like I'm not doing that anymore. Or like I'm not having fun anymore. I think I have learned over the years how to weed out the people out of my life that cause me anxiety or stress or require far too much that I'm able to give. And now I'm in a place where the only people that I have around me are the people that I want to have around me and where it's a equally yoked relationship, like in all of my relationships with all of my friends. What does sex in your 30s in a dream world look like? As you enter into a phase where they say that women have their best sex in their 30s, that their sex drive Do they peaks say that? in their 30s. Yes. <gasps> now, I got to find this study for this because it's something that I learned really early on as a sex educator, uh -huh. that most people with penises, their sex drive peaks at age 18. Like that's when mm. they're like the, the desire to have sex is at its highest. Mm. For people with vulvas, it's in their 30s. Mm. Okay. Well, the sex is great, um, but I'm not there yet. Like, you asked me in 12 hours. Right. Um, <laughs> But it's been amazing. But also, like, I was in a place a few years ago where I was like, damn, like, do I even still have it anymore? And as a Scorpio, that is like an ego. And you don't know this because you don't give a fuck about astrology. I've seen the podcast. 
Um, <laughs> but but I care about you. As a Scorpio, my sex life, my sex drive is like 90% of who I am as a person. Like I, I love sex. I, I want to do it all the fucking time. I think about it probably most the more than most people with penises. I think about it all the time. And it's it's it was scary to think that I was no longer in that place anymore where I like wanted to fuck. And now I wanna fuck now. Do you want should we Cammy? <laughs> if it's time for us, we went from I've seen you once to being best friends, we solidified here. Yes. To now we're scissor sisters. Yeah. And then eventually we'll fall in love and get married. So exactly. this is great. This is the style of relationship <laughs> that I actually foresaw for us. Yes. But I will say, I was thinking recently, and it's because somebody, a, a brand gifted me like this super cute silk nighty, like this black silk nighty, which I feel like the word nighty feels very like. Feels very 30s. But it feels kind of like moo moo. Like it feels like I'm wearing No like girl. A, it feels like it's exactly like a teddy. Okay, good. Because I want more. Like I want to just buy. I just want to be in them around my place. Yes. Like I just want to like light candles. Even if my man's not there. Like I just want to like be. That's what sex in my 30s feels like. It just feels like a silk nighty. I actually did this exact same thing. So I didn't turn 30 to the world. But I turned 30 inside. Mm. Very quietly. Yeah. But. <laughs> Yes. When I did turn 30, I went out to um, Sears mm -hmm. and I bought a really nice robe mm. because I'm like, women in their 30s wear sexy robes. Yeah. And so I bought the robe and then I bought candles. I invested in like scented body lotion because I'm like, yes. I want to give this womanly experience. Yes. And not necessarily just for my partners, but for myself. Like, yeah. I want to feel extremely scrumptious. Yes. Yes. That's somebody actually. <laughs> Somebody wrote to me earlier. It was Neve's wife, actually. She was texting me like, oh my God, you're almost 30. She was like, uh, some, she meant to say, like, you're growing up so fast, but it 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 auto-corrected to tasty. So it said, you're growing up so tasty. And she then she like corrected and was like, I meant fast. And I was like, no, bitch, tasty also works. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> that's how I want to feel. Like, tasty, scrumptious, edible, just like fine all the time. My trainer says that if a woman is fine in her 30s, she'll be fine forever. And I'm like, okay, well, here we are. You are only, you really are. And it's crazy to say because if talk about people who, who could have peaked in their 20s, mm -hmm. you were missed teen in your 20s. It's yeah. just a classic story of like, and then three years later, you're, everyone's like, you're still wearing the sash. Yeah, exactly. The sash is far beyond because you've excelled so much beyond that point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, here we are at the end of your 20s, moving into your 30s. And this could have been a story of, I'm not where I thought I was, but I'm here I am now and I'm so proud of myself. Mm -hmm. But technically, you are where you thought you'd be. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Is a part of you questioning if you would feel as excited to turn 30 in a few hours if you weren't in love right now? I did think about this the other day because I was like, okay, I'm not married. I am seeing someone. I'm very happy with this person but I don't have kids. Like I don't have the things that I thought that I was going to have in my thirties, but it's okay. Like, and if I didn't have this person, I think I would, I think I would be like, I want to, I think it would be where I was before where I was like, I want to intentionally date. Like I want to date with intention. I don't want to waste my time with anyone that's not worth that. Um, or that I don't see a future with. Like I, 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 I think it would have been the same in that sense, but I think I would have thought about it. Like, you know, I probably would have a fuck buddy right now, more than likely. And I guess I would fuck them on my birthday. But like, it feels a little different when you're fucking maybe your future husband. Right. <laughs> it's nice. It's very nice. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think it definitely affects things, though. Like for women, I think we just naturally think about these things. Like if it's if you're someone who does want to get married, turning 30 without a boyfriend or without somebody that you're seeing seriously but I think I would feel worse if I was turning 30 in an unhappy relationship I think I would feel less accomplished if I was turning 30 in an unhappy relationship because then I'd be like god here I am locked in this long relationship that I'm not happy in that you know do I see a future is there a future there would be so much anxiety around it and I'm much happier now the way that I am it's kind of an on-the-spot question okay but 
Is there a cheers to your 20s story that you have? I think I had a really healthy level of fun and play and work and like a good balanced 20s. Like I think I, I, there wasn't, there was not an opportunity that I missed out on. I don't want to say she's gone. I just have different priorities now. And I don't, I don't necessarily miss that. Like I don't want to go back to that, but at the same time, I enjoyed the fuck out of it. I did, but now it's time, it's time to buckle down. Lovers and friends, Lovers and friends. I'ma take you on a trip, baby. I don't pretend. I say, Lovers and friends, uh, I'ma hold you down, down to the end. I say, Lovers and Friends is executive produced by Shared Entertainment's Shan Boudram. It is produced by Boudram and Crazy Cruz with production support from 2S Entertainment's Adam Krasner, Isabel Gallant, and Brianna Barone. The Lovers and Friends theme song is produced by Sean Ross and performed by Jared Brady, who also does the scoring and engineering on our episodes. Lovers and Friends is powered by Audio Boom and made possible by our incredible sponsors, who you can show love to by reading our show notes.